Alors nous sommes euh, ravis euh, de pouvoir vous interviewer aujourd'hui. Euh, pour les lecteurs français amateurs de fantasy et d'imaginaire, pourriez-vous vous présenter, car vous avez fait pas mal de métiers différents, voire inattendus, avant de vous voir publier en tant qu'auteur Yes, my name is Ken Scholes. I am a uh, science fiction and fantasy author from Portland, Oregon, in the United States. I've also had a lot of, I've worn a lot of hats during my time. Uh, I spent a little bit of time as a sailor, a little bit of time as a soldier, an awfully long time as a minister, a priest in the Baptist church, uh, and uh, then worked in nonprofit uh, and government procurement. Uh, along the way, I came back to writing and started with some short stories and then eventually started writing novels, which now are here appearing in France uh, from my, my wonderful publisher, Bragelon. Vous avez démarré votre carrière professionnelle par des nouvelles qui sont devenues des romans, à savoir le cycle des psaumes d'Isaac, publié en France chez Bragelon. En retour, est-ce que cette expérience romanesque a nourri votre travail sur des textes courts et quel est à ce moment-là votre format préféré That's a good question. I did. I came in with short stories because that's what all of my favorite writers had done. Ray Bradbury, Robert E. Howard, um, Clark Ashton Smith. They started with short stories because of the pulp page. And I didn't really know any different. So I started writing short stories at a very young age, left it for about 10 years, came back as an adult. And I think that by the time I wrote the first short story that later became Lamentation, I had, um, I think I had published maybe a dozen short stories. Uh, and then I wrote a short story called Of Metal Men and Scarlet Thread and Dancing with the Sunrise, introducing a character named Rudolfo and a character named Jin Lee Tam and a character named Isaac. Um, and that short story eventually, after a lot of bets and being dared by my friends, turned into Lamentation and then the Psalms of Isaac. I think that it really has changed my process because a short story is usually, for me, between 1,500 words and maybe seven, maybe 7,000 words. Novels are about 140,000 words. So the time it takes to write them is, is much longer, and it's a little intimidating. I was actually very, very nervous about trying to write a novel because I'd be tying up a big chunk of my life to tell the story. I've been known to be a little bit of an overachiever. Instead of just going and writing a novel, a short novel, I ended up writing a five-book saga. Um, I think that they have drawbacks. Short stories are wonderful because you can do it quickly and get a little money. Um, novels take a little longer, but you can make more money. You also can tell a bigger story. I've spent seven years hanging out with the characters in the Psalms of Isaac, And they're becoming unwelcome house guests in my mind. So I'm actually quite anxious to finish the series, tell the whole story in this last book I'm working on now, and then try some other things. Um, I, I couldn't say I prefer one more than the other, but I do think that, um, I think that the novels are going to pay for my children's food faster than the short stories will. Vous faites partie de ces auteurs qui sont très attentifs au retour du lectorat. Pensez-vous que cela soit propre aux créateurs de littérature de genre et aussi parce que ces lecteurs en particulier sont aussi des fans très assidus et très présents sur le net et les réseaux sociaux No, I just think it's important to listen to people because if I'm telling a story, um, if I tell a story alone, well, that's fun, but if I'm telling a story with a tribe of people who are following the story, I should care. I should care about what they think so that I can adjust as I go, because telling a story is like dancing. And if you always step on the partner's toes um, or try to only dance alone, um, you will always dance alone. So I want to know that I'm going in a good direction and, and have their feedback, and, uh, because I don't just tell the stories for myself. I tell them for the people who love them. Um, I don't tell them for the people who don't like them. Those, those people can go read other people's books. But yes, I... Um, I try to be careful, I try to be respectful. I try to recognize that I, I don't know everything. I do some things badly. I am a product of my culture and my time, uh, I'm, you know, the, my age in the, uh, in the world. Um, you know, I am a white male, heterosexual, living in the United States. And we can sometimes be blind to the things that we accidentally do or say or don't do or say. So I think it's just good in life, not just with writing, but in life, to listen and hear what other people have to say so that we can make course corrections along the way. 
Le point de départ de la série repose sur la chute et la destruction de la puissante cité de Vindouir, où était entreposée toute la connaissance du monde. S'en suivent des ruptures polyptiques au sein de cet univers et l'imminence d'une guerre. On pense à la bibliothèque d'Alexandrie, bien sûr. Croyez-vous que la guerre, en général, soit annoncée par la chute d'une culture ou qu'inversement, parvenue à son apogée, elle ne puisse que mener à des conflits dans un grand cycle perpétuel I, Yes, I absolutely drew from the idea of the fall of the library at Alexandria. That was a, an influence. Certainly the events. You know, I, I, in the university, I studied history. And I studied history across the board, European history, American history, uh, Asian history, South American history. And history largely does repeat itself. I think ultimately fear drives war. People become afraid, and when they become afraid, they don't like to be afraid, so they become angry or hateful. Um, and then when you are at war, you have to stay, you have to keep everybody angry or hateful so that they won't see how horrible it is um, what they're, what they're doing to each other. And I can speak to this not just from observing history, but because when my nephew went to Afghanistan, two weeks later, I didn't have a nephew anymore. Um, war is a horrible thing. And I, I have to believe that, that uh, and what I'm dealing with in my series is what happens when people become afraid. What happens when fear takes them to the edge to, to where they, they become angry and violent um, until one side wins and one side loses. And then at that point, often, unfortunately, the losing side is absorbed into the winning side, and the winning side write, rewrites the history to write them completely out of it. And we don't just do this with war. We do this with people that we don't understand. We do this with people who are different than us. And so in my fiction, I like to explore, I think people want to read fiction about people, and I want it to feel real. So I'm digging deep to find the motivations that cause us to love and hate and to fear um, and to hope. Votre écriture est efficace et tout s'enchaîne avec fluidité malgré le fait que l'univers soit riche et fort de nombreux personnages. Êtes-vous du genre à travailler avec un plan précis et détaillé en tête ou vous laissez-vous emporter par le fil du récit tout en gardant le contrôle sur la ligne générale I initially wrote the book on a dare. Um, I was dared to write it quickly because there was a festival coming, a convention, uh, where I could meet editors and agents and my friend and my, and, uh, my friend Jay Lake and my wife Jen West took me to dinner and said, you need to write this book, you need to write it now, you need to write it fast, and if you have it ready in seven weeks, we'll make sure that you, you, you'll meet all the editors and agents you could ever want to meet. Jay told me he would take me under his wing and I knew that he knew everybody and he knew that I needed somebody to kick me in the butt a little bit to get me to write this. So I wrote Lamentation on a dare in seven weeks. Um, once I wrote Lamentation, everybody got very excited, even though I didn't understand why at the time. And so I suddenly found that I was writing a five book series. Um, I do a little bit of planning. Um, and maybe uh, most of my planning involves laying out how many chapters, how many times my characters um, will be on stage. I think about each act, so I take time to think as I go, and I try to write a little bit by the seat of my pants and a little bit with a plan, but not too much of a careful plan. Um, though at the same time, I know exactly how the series ends, and I have since I wrote Lamentation. Enfin, vous reste-t-il du temps pour lire les œuvres de vos collègues écrivains? Et si oui, certaines œuvres ont-elles ont une influence sur votre travail? En gros, juste après Ken Scholes, quel auteur nous conseilleriez-vous I just quit my job in October, so I've just had maybe eight months um, for a long while because I have small children and I had so many other things going on. I really had no time to read. I barely had time to write. Um, I'm just now starting to read again. When I read, I usually won't read science fiction and fantasy, or didn't. I don't know how it will be in the future, but it's, in the past I've gone outside to Elmore Leonard, Nelson DeMille, Tom Clancy, um, to, to kind of clean my brain. Um, but I, I did read a, a fantastic book on the plane um, called Black Blade Blues by J.A. Pitts. Um, I certainly have, I have a list of writers I want to read. Um, I want to finish reading um, Jay Lake's Mainspring series. And um, I think that some of the writers that really wow me are largely writers from the past, like Ray Bradbury, Howard Waldrop, um, th those guys. Uh, but really, I take in, I, I am not one of the writers who thinks that 
books are the best thing ever. I came to story from television and, and movies. Speed Racer, Land of the Lost, Star Blazers. So, and, and the movies, Planet of the Apes, Battle, uh, uh, Star Wars, um, series like Battlestar Galactica and Lost, um, and Firefly. So I take in story everywhere, comic books, video games, television, movies, music, poetry. I pull it all in, I try to have a balanced diet, but um, I'm still trying to find my balance. Um, it's just been eight months, I've got one book left to write in the series. I know that once I finish this last book, I'm gonna take a little break and catch up on my reading. Um, and until then, you know, I'm keeping my eye out for, for the stories that, that grab, the stories that grab the world. Right now, I, I, I read also The Hunger Games. What a story, great story. Um, so when I see something really grabbing the world, I try to, try to take the time, but I think most of my fans would much rather I wrote a book um, than hear about what I had read. So I try to give, take care of the dance, again, the dance. I don't want to step on their toes, I'll give them their book. Merci beaucoup Ken d'avoir répondu à nos questions et à très bientôt j'espère pour la suite des Psaumes d'Isaac.